Well, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. We're going to change the gears a bit now because we're going to actually go into replacing the respiratory muscles by a ventilator. So what I'm going to talk about now is first to convince you a little bit where I stop this thing here. Some of this data is actually quite old, but to get it from bench to bedside is a long, long journey. So first, uh, we work in Toronto and NAVA all the time, and we have now kind of taken some extra steps, and we'll talk about those ones tomorrow. Uh, let's see here. My conflicts of interest are that I am one of the inventors. Uh, we have a few other ones. I should introduce Lars the Instruments, Van Freeberg, who is up there who are my mentors, and Jennifer Beck, who is also here. They are like other inventors of this mode. So um, when we talk about kind of ventilation today, we talk usually about the machine that controls the patient. We don't think the other way, except for that we can trigger it, and it, with the exception of NAV and PAV. That's the two only modes today that we actually can try to see through what the patient is doing. Uh, I'm not going to go into the control technologies, but what you look upon up here is some of the factors that actually influence you when you breathe. And if we talk about PEEP, I could ask everybody of you just to breathe out FRC and then start to breathe with the same tidal volume, but during exhalation instead. You will probably get 5-10 breaths before you take a deep sigh. The hearing broy reflex would not allow you to do this. So, <clears throat> we talk about the hearing broy reflex. Maybe I should point. Is there a pointer here? No? Oh, that's good. Thank you. So, this is just an old spirogram. There's nothing particular about this, except for one thing, that usually expiration stops at some volume, unless we force it. And this is something that we have, we discuss whether it's in, in adults or not, but it is really in adults too, but very hard to see sometimes. But in infants, it's definitely there. Newborns is like very strong, and so is it in rabbits. So that's why what I'm going to talk about now is rabbits. The uh, first study that Guillaume Emerio did with us was actually, sorry, no, this is Jean-Christophe Allo from France, who did with us, was actually, we just changed the PEEP levels in rabbits, and we looked upon the diaphragm activity when they had an acute lung injury. So what happens when you take away the PEEP from a rabbit when they have acute lung injury? They have edema, they have burnt kind of alveolis, and so on. They want to recruit. So when you don't do it for them, like the, uh, this is the esophageal pressure showing what happens when you apply different levels of PEEP. So when you make the esophageal pressure go more positive, they kind of all go from a range of very erratic breathing where they, to a high level of PEEP, like five centimeter, 10 centimeter, start to get the more systematic breathing and, and, and the tonic activity. You see here that the EDI is very, very high during exhalation. It comes down until they come to a point where they actually stop breathing, where it's the upper during royal reflex. So you have a range, you're stuck between these two levels. And in, human, in adults, for example, we did a study, we tried actually to pop the lungs out of our bodies. We sat on nerve and cranked it so high that we could, and we could not do this. We couldn't even change the inspiratory capacity. We only reduced the diaphragm activity, that's all we did. So we have very strong intrinsic reflexes to prevent us from damage ourselves, either going up in volume or down in volume. And then it comes to Guillaume. So Guillaume did this in infants, and that's the only in adult, or sorry, the only human slide I will show you. But what he showed was that if you had a patient on SEEP, sorry, on PEEP, the diaphragm activity was low, shifted downhill. So you see the low is like that this activity here is close to zero. But when you put the patient to zero PEEP, the airway pressure fell. And what happened? The lowest like, diaphragm activity was increased. So the animal did not, uh, sorry, this, this case, the baby would not let go. It would keep a volume voluntarily. The same thing we discussed before, you can't stop some patient from taking deep breaths well, you can't allow a baby to collapse the lungs because they don't want to. So when we initially started with NAVA, that was like in this Nature paper in 99, we actually presented not NAVA as it is today because that is a kind of an industrial defect, I would say. That's like because today we work with triggering and cycling off. Machines can't do continue, continuity. What we described was a NAVA that was post-continuous. 
So you see here like deep breaths get more assist, small breaths get, get less assist and so on. But you see when you get tonic activity in this situation we had here, you actually get the pressure goes up, this is pressure, sorry, EDI goes up during exhalation, pressure goes up and the FRC goes up. So you have an automated peep. So you're actually peeping yourself or the machine is. So this is a bit graphical, I'm sorry, but um, it was the only way I can explain this study is what you see here is an animal that has an open chest wall. Muscles are disappeared, so the respiratory muscles can't do anything. They have NAVA going on, but continuous NAVA. And what we're doing now is we're increasing the gain factor, the NAVA level. So we just make the ventilator put more and more pressure for a given EDI. You can see the lungs slowly coming up as we do it, but they will not leave the chest. So the FRC and the upper volume will be controlled. It will not get any bigger than this. So we use this model in the CT camera. Do I get forward here? Yeah, so now I introduce a study we haven't published yet, but this is a study with Lucas Brande from Switzerland, on the Murray from, Ger uh, uh, from uh, Germany, Jörn Hedenskjerner from Sweden, Jennifer Art and me from Toronto, and Jukka Takala from Switzerland too. So we made this trial where we simply cut off, took away the respiratory muscles and replaced them by a machine. This way you have no length tension relationship, you have nothing that can affect the force that you can generate or anything. But you would have the vagal afferents, which we also could cut, and I will show you that in the experiments. And we had the CO2 receptors. So now you're driven on vagal feedback and CO2 response. That's what you're kind of left with. So what I show in this graph now is from top volume, EDI, and ventilator pressure. Starting from a zero NAVA level, that means there is no, EDI, no pressure for any EDI, however much you create. And you can see they create up to 13 microvolts of EDI. You can see it's very erratic. There doesn't return to zero between breaths. It just stays up there. We call it tonic. The pressure is zero. And the volume, of course, is zero because the chest is open. We start to turn the knob, so you can see here the increase of NAVA levels down here, and the time factor is scale, scale is also here. So you see now at number one here, that's the CT scan of those lungs that you see those little things in the bottom there? That's the lungs, totally collapsed. We go to the next step. You can see here now there's more phasic activity. We have increased the volume a little bit, and we got some pressure. Well, they start to show something here. On the three, you can see there's a little bit more lungs. Then comes 4A and 4B. What does the animal do? Takes a sigh. Pop. And the lung goes from like this to this. One deep breath. Just popped it open. <coughs> then we go a little bit further up. You can see now that the diaphragm activity has come down. The, both the tonic activity, like the lowest values, as much as the deflection during the inspiration has gone down. So the drive is reduced, it doesn't work so much to hold the tonic activity, and we come up here to a little bit of a plateau here. So even if we increase, you can see now the pressure doesn't change. So why does it not increase pressure? Like Because it seems that it could recruit a bit more. Here comes the other side, pop. And we go one step up again, and now we are kind of down here, fully recruited. Well, at the point here, you can see that there hasn't happened anything with the ventilator pressure. The lower one, which is your peep, is constant. The upper pressure is constant. Two, no, three sides in this animal is the thing that really recruited it. You get the background pressure to keep your ventilation, and to recruit, it's a sigh. And you see here the volume is going up to, like, high volumes, so this is like a very increased this FRC and I will show it to you like in the next few graphs. So in this graph, you see on the top panels here, this is an ALI, and, but this is an acute lung injury, which was the same as in the previous one. Here we can see the EDI, you can see how the EDI is decreasing, there's one side, there's two sides, there's another animal. You can see how the pressure is increasing, we increase the NAVA level, this is the upper pressures, and you see the two sides, and this is the lower pressure, that's your PEEP. Remember, there is no PEEP set here. 
This comes straight out of the brain on a sedated animal that doesn't have any respiratory muscles, breathing through a machine. What happens to the lung recruitment? Well, it is, if you look upon the enhanced field units here, there is a little bit of overdistension, slight, but most of it is in the well aerated area. So you have a totally recruited lung. We do the same thing after we have cut the vagal nerves. What you see here is a delay of the decrease in diaphragm activity. You see an increase in diaphragm activity here too, and you see a plateau. But it's a little overshoot here. But what you don't see, there is no tonic activity. This signal is zero, so the diaphragm activity at expiration doesn't do anything. CO2 receptors tells you that the volume you should reach is whatever, but at what volume you do it, they don't care. It's the vagal receptors that determines, the hearing broiler reflex that determines at what volumes you actually breathe. So what happens here? Well, we have mostly poorly aerated areas plus atelectasis. <coughs> so we have shifted the whole thing downhill, which is giving a challenge to Hadrian because he's going to speak about this tomorrow, that it actually works after bilateral lagotomy <laughs> too. But that's another story. So what we show here is that we have two reflexes that are very important, CO2 receptors and vagal afferents. To show it in a different way, where you should, can see really the effect of the PEEP. If you look at the inspiration here and the expiration here, this is a healthy lung. So you can see in a healthy lung it's not so important to recruit because it, it, it kind of reopens so easily. If it collapses, it can just reopen so easily. The surfactant is there, everything is there. And it doesn't deflate more, much more during the end of expiration. If you look after lung injury, you see it's fully recruited in both situations. And why? This is because you have to keep the lung open. If it, goes collab if it, co if it collapses, it sticks. You have to rip it open. It's not like the same surfactant easy to open sponge anymore. If you do this in non-invasive ventilation, surprisingly, we get the same effect. And I will come back to that. But what you see during the vagotomy is you get a nice, beautiful, huge inspiration here, but it's collapsed during exhalation with a lot of atelectatic areas that has to be re-recruited in the next breath again. And we probably get the worst of a synchronous in this case where you close and open. Now, remember that this is with an open chest. That's why the lung is allowed to, comp to fall together. In Hadrian's study, we will show you tomorrow, the chest is closed after the surgery. So it will stay recruited, which is a big difference. Now, to finalize this, this, this presentation, it's my last slide, which is a finding we did. It's a side finding, but it's really, really interesting. Many people have said for a long time that you have, that the upper airways actually have an impact on FRC. Nobody has been able to show it, really. I know that uh, we tried in Sherbrooke many times with the laryngeal receptors and so on, but <clears throat> what this study shows, or this, this data shows, is during continuous NAVA, but when you do it as triggered NAVA, so we take away the assist during exhalation, during non-invasive non ventilation. So what happens, like when you breathe with continuous NAVA here, is you get assist during both inspiration and expiration, so this is like you have tonic activity and it translates into pressure. You see you have a peep of about 5 here and an upper pressure of 12. Then we take about away the expiratory assist. You see that we just drop down here. What happens? Well, EDI goes up, but the lungs collapse. Now we do the same thing during non-invasive ventilation. This was intubated. There is no upper airways that can stop you from collapsing here. In non-invasive ventilation, we do the same thing. So we start off in the same way. Like, but we don't have much tonic activity anymore. And the pressure goes to zero. And then we remove the expiratory assist and nothing happens. Because the vagal mediated upper airways are now just breaking the flow during exhalation. You have a peep valve built in that can help you. I don't say it does it all the time, but it can if you do non-invasive ventilation help you to stay, keep the lungs from collapsing. It's a break during exhalation, so it just stops the flow until you prolong the exhalation, so you kind of regulate the expiratory time constant in a sense, or adapt to it. 
So these were the two factors. So the hearing broil reflex is like interacts with diaphragm electrical activity to prevent atelectasis. Possibly the same reflex also adjusts upper airway peep function to prevent atelectasis. The vagally mediated lung recruitment is increased after ALI and continuous neurally controlled assist. That means if you keep assist during inspiration and expiration, may prevent VLE in this situation. Thank you very much.